Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Deputy Chief Roy Mocoso, R-O-Y-M-O-K-O-S-S-O, -O -S -S -O, um, Deputy Chief PIO for the St. Paul Fire Department. I'll go first and just kind of talk about the events uh, that occurred uh, early this morning, and then uh, the Chief will follow up with uh, some remarks, and then after that, I'll, uh, I'll take any questions. Um, so a little after 1.30, uh, crews were called to uh, an address on the 1200 block of Arkwright. Um, when they arrived, they found uh, smoky conditions. Uh, they made entry. Uh, they found a fire, which they quickly extinguished. Uh, crews were on scene. Uh, first crew was there just under four minutes. Uh, and then we had three crews there inside of five minutes. Um, as soon as they had a knock on the fire, they started searches on the main floor. Um, they ended up finding uh, seven individuals inside the home, uh, six uh, children and one adult. Um, all of the individuals, individuals inside the home were taken outside where um, CPR was started. Uh, all the individuals were unconscious at the time of their rescue from the home. Um, CPR was started and then all individuals were transported um, by St. Paul Fire Paramedics to a local hospital. Uh, crews finished up at the scene, conducted overhaul, and um, started the investigation. Uh, the investigation does not appear to be suspicious. Uh, this appears to be an accidental fire. Um, no responders were injured uh, during firefighting activities. Uh, a total of 63 firefighters responded, eight in fire apparatus, as well as eight additional in our paramedic or ambulances, uh, as well as three chief officers. And crews were on scene. Um, investigations kind of wrapped up around 5.30, but uh, the majority of the firefighting activities were over within about 30 minutes, but crews were on scene for the better part of two and a half hours. So with that, I'll turn things over to the chief who has uh, spoken to a number of the responders. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Hello everyone, uh, uh, Chief Butchinks, uh, I-N-K-S for last name spelling. Um, just wanna take this opportunity to thank the responders that, that responded to this, this event um, in my almost 30 year career. Um, I can count on one hand on how many times this happens. So it's a pretty significant event. Um, and, and thanking the women and men of this department is uh, utmost priority for myself. Uh, talked to a few of the responders um, that, that responded. Again, Chief Mikosa mentioned the, the response times under, under four minutes and uh, having four apparatus, five apparatus there in under five minutes is, is an incredible response time. Um, and and the, the reason that uh, these seven individuals uh, still have a chance right now. So uh, one of our rescuers, one of our persons uh, rescued three, three people. And I'll walk you through that real quick on how that works. We show up on scene in a, in a, uh, a house or a dwelling that's visibility is, is nil, that you can't see anything. And this individual went in um, quickly found one child, uh, pulled the child out, went back in, found another child, pulled that child out. And they went back in for a third time and found another child and pulled that child out and um, began uh, doing medical uh, CPR on that child um, in, uh, right as they exited the building. So it's a very traumatic event for our folks. Um, you know, you know, we do this for a living, right? It's our job, but it's, it's still we're human beings and it's, it's very difficult to do a lot of times and to um, maintain composure and to maintain uh, uh, the reason why we're there. So um, these individuals that responded today really uh, performed heroic things and, and um, these seven individuals are in a hospital uh, uh, where they're hopefully uh, obviously receiving the best care that they can. So. Um, with that, that's that's all I have. So thank you. Were there working smoke detectors yeah. in the home? How do you Secret. reconcile sort of the lack of visible damage <clears throat> to the significant number of injuries? Sure. Um, yes. Uh, indications are that there were smoke, working smoke detectors in the home at the time of the fire. Um, some of the uh, things that probably uh, impeded uh, the, the occupants being able to get out is just uh, the location of where the fire was and the location of where the bedrooms were. Um, and so, um, and the additional fact is that there are six children, one adult. Um, I, I think the one thing I can say is that uh, we'll continue through the investigation process to try to determine um, how we can turn around and use this information for our prevention education. But um, having working smoke detectors in the home, having an evacuation plan um, is always important to have. What are the conditions of the seven? 
uh, so uh, just based on HIPAA, we, we can't talk about it. I can tell you that the, the victims were brought out of the home unconscious. CPR was started right away, and all seven uh, were transported to local hospital. Um, I did get an update, and two of the um, occupants were transported to a different ho uh, hospital, and that was just based on, on needs and incapacity at, at, uh, at the primary hospital where they were taken. Are they all expected to recover? Um, so I, I should probably address this also. Uh, there was an initial report that was uh, there was a fire fatality, and I think that came out early, and I'm not sure how that was re reported, but um, all of the victims um, right now are in critical conditions. Um, so that's about all I can report or say on that. Uh, in the investigation process, we utilize a scientific methodology, so the area of origin um, is investigated. Um, we use monitors to determine whether there's uh, any um, uh, gasoline or any ignitable liquids that would be utilized, as well as, um, you know, witness testimony. So uh, the, our partners within St. Paul Police do an excellent job of uh, obtaining additional um, interviews, as well as um, collecting uh, potential cell phone data or um, video from ring to type doorbells and things like that. So, uh, but I can tell you that um, our investigators' preliminary report um, uh, are leaning towards accidental um, with common causes uh, such as electricity or electrical, uh, potentially smoking, or um, an unattended candle as uh, potential sources of ignition. We also have contact at the State Fire Marshal's office and uh, have notified them and working with them also. What's the condition of the Uh, from the overall total value or damage, uh, I don't have a dollar amount, but I can tell you that the uh, I did check with the Department of Safety and Inspections. Uh, there's um, uh, the the home is in good state and it's owner occupied. Excuse me, is this a mom and her children? Uh, there was one adult inside the home at the time, uh, as well as six children, uh, and then there was one adult that was at work um, that unfortunately had to be contacted. Um, SPPD also helped with. Um, finding the individual and then contacting um, them at their work. Chief, you commented that this is one of the worst you've seen in your career. Can you tell us the last time you've seen anything that even compares to this? We don't see a lot of injuries in fires. We see a lot of, a lot of property damage, but not always that many serious injuries. Yeah, what, what comes to mind, again, 30 years on the job, it's, it's uh, you know, to try to come back to one incident. But early on in my career, uh, we had a, a fire on Lawson that, um, where, where five children um, didn't make it. So um, that, that, what, that's what reminds me of this, this call, the significance of the rescues. Um, obviously, this so far is a diff different outcome, but that's what comes to, one of the runs that come to mind and that I can comment on. So. Well, can you tell us about the ages of the individuals that were inside? Uh, again, uh, being the paramedic transport agency um, with HIPAA, I can tell you that uh, one adult and six children were, were transported. Sure. Um, well, fire doubles in size every minute. So from uh, the fire standpoint, um, crews were able to quickly make entry and get a knock on the fire. Um, uh, you know, the majority of fire fatalities are due to asphyxiation. So two to three minutes without um, uh, oxygen um, can lead to a fatality or else can uh, lead to conditions that could result in brain damage in the future. So. Is there any indication that the occupants were awoken <clears throat> by the smoke detector but unable to get out versus just not hearing it and the being was overcome? Uh, there was a 911 call made, um, and it's believed to be from the residents. Um, and uh, again, through additional investigation, we'll be able to hopefully learn more. Uh, no, no, the age of the home would not make a difference in this situation. Again, um, just based on where the fire was, um, their primary means of egress, uh, they would have had to go through that room. Um, and so again, I just go back to having working smoke detectors and having an egress plan is incredibly important for you and your family, especially if you have young ones at home. Can you talk about this time of year? Is this a time that we usually see more fires in the winter months or January in particular or anything like that? 
Sure. Changes of season usually result in um, higher fires for us or a greater amount of fires for us. Um, as it kind of gets colder, people start firing up furnaces that barely made it through last year, start using space heaters, start smoking indoors. These are all things that we just start to see. Um, Midwinter, um, that kind of levels off. Um, and then, um, you, you know, in the spring, we start to see, you know, um, people smoking outdoors and leaving cigarettes on decks, uh, people utilizing um, grills for for cooking and then having them too close to homes as well as uh, rec fires and then uh, fireworks also. So the change of season usually um, brings a spike in, in fires for us. Are you able to tell us whether their injuries were more from smoke versus fire or vice versa? Uh, preliminary reports uh, indicate that uh, the uh, injuries are predominantly from smoke inhalation. Where? Uh, again, there was a 911 call that's believed to be from the home, um, and there just wasn't much communication on the line. Can you say where in the, the house the rescues were made? Uh, all of the individuals were found on the first floor. And where did the fire start? Uh, it would, in the first floor. And I, I know you gave the timeline for when crews arrived, and do you know how long it would have been from when they um, were able to begin the search? Uh, I can work on getting that information from you. So from our arrival time to, uh, to when lines are deployed, uh, it's something that we train to. So being there you know, inside of four minutes, uh, most likely having lines deployed uh, inside of two minutes and then having a primary and backup line inside and extinguishing the fire, um, that time frame will, would probably all been about seven minutes or eight minutes from the, the time of dispatch. But I can work on getting an exact time for you. Chief, you talked about how this was hard on your the first responders who were there. Can you talk about is there anything that you do for them now in the coming days? Uh, obviously traumatic and they try and leave it behind, but is there yeah. anything that is done for them? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. So we obviously we, we can set up a critical incident stress debriefing. That's a pretty formalized approach. But what our department has done and has been doing it for years is a peer support um, program where our own people go through specialized training to um, be available for our folks, and we've already started that process. I've reached out to the responders as well, um, see how they're doing, our other chief officers, our leadership does that as well, um, not just today, but throughout, and just, just see how they're doing and um, offer any, any help that they may need. Um, we're, we're, very, we're not very good at asking for help, right? We're very good at uh, responding and, and offering help, but we're not very good at saying, hey, I need some help. But we put programs in place to make that, that process easier for them. So, thank you. Can you um, give the name of the firefighter who sold the, was it a firefighter who sold the three children? Yes, as we kind of wrap this up, we'll, as, as we get more information, um, we definitely will release that, so. Yeah. Um, so with that, I, I just, this is a, an unfortunate incident and hopefully, um, you know, we can help share some of the things that can prevent this from happening for other people in their homes. And again, working smoke detectors and having an evacuation plan are the two things that you can do um, and practicing that plan, uh, especially if it involves uh, children. Uh, I'll update folks uh, um, via additional release if uh, additional information comes out. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Butch, B. Butch. Yeah, I forgot. I haven't had the first name here. <laughs>